Hi there! I am Daisy P. Magallanes and today I'm going to discuss the seven types of curriculum and its examples. But before that, let us define first what is curriculum. So curriculum is a standards based sequence of planned experiences where students practice and achieve proficiency in content and applied learning skills. Curriculum is the central guide for all educators to what is essential for teaching and learning so that every student has access to rigorous academic experiences, the structure, organizations, and considerations in a curriculum are created in order to enhance students' learning and facilitate instructions. The curriculum must include the necessary goals, methods, materials, and assessments to effectively support the instructions in learning. In education, a curriculum is broadly defined as the totality of students' experiences that occur in the educational process. The term often refers specifically to a planned sequence of instructions or to a view of the students' experiences in terms of a the educators or school's instructional goals. So now, without any further ado, let us proceed to the types of curriculum. So the first one is the ideal curriculum. The ideal curriculum has particularly focused on the means to help the students move beyond the realm of the outer consciousness into the realm of inner consciousness during the learning process. So this practice allows the learners to function from a higher, more focused level of thinking. So the examples of the ideal curriculum is building self-confidence. So students must believe that they can achieve their goal. This involves dispelling and purging the mind of fear, doubt, self-blame, imposed limitations, and limited expectation. So the next one is discovering the joy of learning. So when students realize the joy of learning, they not only become permanent explorers in the great adventure of life and learning, they also become enthusiastic learners. Enthusiasm is a key component of ideal curriculum and the ideal student. So the next one is learning the relaxation response. A relaxed, happy mind is the major prerequisite for, for learning. Therefore, the relaxation response is one of the most critical phase of ideal curriculum. So the next one is using creative visualization. So visualization is the ability to create and sustain pictures in the mind. The process is used in several ways in ideal curriculum. The last one is using music and rhythm. Rhythm is the heartbeat of the universe and has a direct effect on all life, including people. So children are moved by music and rhythm. The beat enhances the memory. Young people quickly learn the words to the music that they prefer and to rap songs. So that's all the examples of the ideal curriculum. So now let us proceed to written curriculum. So the written curriculum refers to a lesson plan or syllabus written by the teachers. Another example is the one written by curriculum experts with the help of subject teachers. This kind of written curriculum needs to be pilot tested or tried out in sample schools to determine its effectiveness. The example of the written curriculum is the scope, sequence of charts, lesson plan, and syllabus. Now let us proceed to the next types of curriculum, the taught curriculum. This is about the implementations of the written curriculum. Whatever is being taught or an activity being done in the classroom is a taught curriculum. So when the teachers give a lecture, initiate group work, or ask students to a laboratory experiments 
with their guidance, the taught curriculum is demonstrated. This curriculum contains different teaching styles and learning styles to address the students' needs and interests. So the examples of the taught curriculum is the plan activities which are put into action. So the next one is the supported curriculum. A supported curriculum involves the additional tools, resources, and learning experiences found inside the classroom and outside the classroom. This include textbook, field trips, software, and technology, in addition to other innovative new techniques to engage students. Teachers and other individuals involved with a course are also a component of a supported curriculum. So the example of the supported curriculum is the projector, books, and computer that are crucial in today's generation. So the next one is the assessed curriculum. Taking an exam is part of an assessed curriculum. When students take a quiz or the midterm and final exams, these evaluations are the so-called assessed curriculum. Teachers may use the pencil and paper test and authentic assessments like portfolio and performance-based assessments to know if the students are progressing or not or not. So example, the paper and pencil test, oral examinations, and performance test. So the next one is the learn curriculum. So this type of curriculum indicates what the students have learned, the capability that students should demonstrate at the end of the lessons can be measured through learning outcomes. A learning outcomes can be manifested by what students can perform or do either in their cognitive, affective, or psychomotor domains. The test results can determine the learning outcome and the students can achieve through learning objectives. So the example of the lear learned curriculum is the test results. So the last types of curriculum is hidden curriculum so the hidden curriculum refers to the unplanned or unintended curriculum but plays a vital role in learning it consists of norms values and procedures the example of the hidden curriculum is the physical condition peer influence and teacher learning instruction so that's all I hope you learned something from my discussion. See you next time.